bringing you the two K Sports MCA and Selection Show. We're all set to show you the seating and pairings, so get out your bracket sheet, get those pencils ready. Here are the basics. Of the 65 available tournament bids, 31 are automatically given to conference champions. The tournament committee hands out the remaining 34 bids on an at-large basis. An opening round game will take place on Tuesday night to narrow the field to 64 teams. Before we get into the brackets for the upcoming tournament, let's take a look at the final top 25 media polls. The media rankings are what everyone's been following for the last four months. But in just a minute, the selection committee's opinion is going to be the only one that matters. We've seen them break away from the national rankings in the past, and it won't be long before we find out if the committee's done it again. Now let's take a look at the NCAA tournament bubble and see which teams are sitting at home with their fingers crossed, hoping to see their name in the brackets. There are a lot of worthy candidates among these 10 teams, Clark. Which of these bubble teams stands out to you right now? Utah State isn't among the very strongest of the non-power conference teams, but they're pretty close. I'm sure they were hoping for a better showing at their conference tournament. Now it's sit and wait time. And we have a few more teams in similar positions, right, Clark? Georgia State did just enough to get on the bubble, but I'm not sure they did enough to get off the bubble. There may have been a few too many bumps in the road for them. I'm sure it's been a long week for those teams, but the wait's almost over. The NCAA Selection Committee has finished its meeting and we're ready to unveil the top four seeds in this year's tournament. The Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets are the top overall seed and they will play in the East Region. On to the second number one seed who will play in the South Region. The Arizona Wildcats are seeking their second NCAA championship in school history. The Clemson Tigers are our third number one seed and they'll play in the Midwest Regional. They're back in the tournament again and no doubt they'll be the experience of last year's appearance as they try to get to the final four this year. And finally, our fourth number one seed will play in the West region. The Boston College Eagles are in the tournament field as a number one seed for the first time in the history of their program. Now, here's how the brackets shape up based on where the number one seeds have been assigned. In one national semifinal game, the winner of the East region will play the winner of the South regional in the other semifinal game. The winner of the Midwest regional will play the winner of the West Regional. Those games will be played on Saturday, April 4th. Then we'll be on to the National Championship game on Monday night, April 6th. Anything shocking to you about those picks? Well, when you see the selection committee deviate from the top four teams in the media poll, it's a little surprising. They've opened themselves up to some criticism with these picks. So, with the number one seeds out of the way, finally time to tackle the rest of the bracket. First up, we take a look at the East Regional. The Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets are the top seed, finishing at 25 and 6. They finish second in the ACC. They will take on the winner of the opening round play-in game between Mercy, with 12 wins, and Liberty from the Big South. And now, the number 8 seed, the Colorado Buffalo, come into the tournament on the strength of an 8th place finish in their conference regular season, and were winners of their conference tournament. They're going to play the number 9 seed, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, who were 7th in their conference, finishing at 16 and 12. Marquette comes in as the number 5 seed, finishing at 23 and 11. And they will take on the 12th seed from the Big Sky, the Tigers of the Pacific, with 22 wins. West Virginia enters the field as the number 4 seed from the Big 12. This will be their 29th appearance ever in the NCAA tournament. They'll be getting ready to face the number 13 seed, the Old Dominion Monarchs. Season with 22 wins. The West Virginia Mountaineers are going to provide serious matchup problems to any team that doesn't have depth and defensive ability at both guard spots. They have outstanding backcourt play at both ends of the court. It's the main reason they've made it this far. They're going to have to maintain that form if they want to do some damage in this tournament. The Kentucky Wildcats are in as the number six seed. They'll be taking on the number 11 seed, the Pittsburgh Panthers, with 17 wins. Indiana comes in as the number three seed, finishing at 26 and 6. Eastern Kentucky comes in to face them at number 14 with 19 wins in the tournament championship of the Ohio Valley Conference. Our number seven seed from the SEC, the Florida Gators, were rewarded for their outstanding play this season with an at-large bid and a ticket to the big dance. They are going to play the number 10 seed, the Oregon State Beavers, who were semifinalists in their conference tournament, finishing at 19 and 13. Next up is the number two seed. The Yale Bulldogs are the conference tournament and regular season champions from the West Coast Conference. They'll be going up against the number 15 seed, the Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders, with 19 wins. This month,
mark their 10th appearance in the NCAA tournament in team history. I think this could wind up being the bracket that brings us this year's Cinderella story. A few of the higher seeds here have had terrific seasons, and I'll be surprised if at least one of them doesn't put together a long run in this tournament. Next up, we'll take a look at the Arizona Wildcats, are the top seed, finishing at 22 and 6. They were winners of the regular season championship in the Pac-10. They'll take on the midshipmen of Navy, the number 16 ranked team. This is their 12th appearance in the NCAA tournament in school history. Wichita State comes in as the number 8 seed, finishing at 24 and 8. UCLA comes in to face them at number 9 with 20 wins and a legion of loyal fans just dying for some tournament success. Oregon enters the field as the number 5 seed from the Pac-10. This marks their 19th appearance all time in the NCAA tournament. They'll be getting ready to face the number 12 seed, the Minnesota Golden Gopher. Finish the season with 21 wins. The Oregon Ducks are a team that is just so powerful and strong up front. I would put their front court up against just about any other teams in the nation right now. It's always good to have strong guard play, but if you ask most coaches, I guarantee you they take the good big man over the good little man most times. Their interior play should serve them very well in this competition. USC comes in as the number four seed, finishing at 25 and 8. They'll take on the 13th seed from the MEAC, the Hampton Pirates, with 25 wins. And now the number six seed, the Alabama Crimson Tide, come into the tournament fifth in their conference during the regular season and finish second in their conference tournament. They are going to play the number 11 seed, the Trojans of Arkansas Little Rock, who came in first in their conference tournament, finishing at 22 and 8. The Louisville Cardinals are in as the number three seed. They'll be taking on the number 14 seed, the St. Louis Billiken, with 17 wins. Next up is the number seven seed. The Northwestern Wildcats are the conference tournament and regular season champions from the Mountain West Conference. They'll be going up against the number 10 seed, the Providence Friars, with 21 wins. They return once more to the very familiar surroundings of the NCAA tournament. Our number two seed is from the Big East, the Georgetown Hoyas were rewarded for their outstanding play this season with an at-large bid and a ticket to the big game. They're going to play the number 15 seed, the Northern Colorado Bears, who came in first in their conference tournament, finishing it not. It's the first question every selection Sunday, which is the toughest bracket? Well, this bracket looks to me like it wins that prize this year. Not only are the top seeds strong, the lower seeds can be dangerous as well. On to our third bracket, the Clemson Tigers are the top seed, finishing at 23 and 6. They finish third in the ACC. They'll take on the Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lion, the number 16 ranked team. This marks their first appearance all time in the NCAA tournament. Our number eight seed is from the ACC. The North Carolina State Wolfpack were rewarded for their outstanding play this season with an at-large bid and a ticket to the big game. They're going to play the number nine seed, the Long Beach State 49ers, who were semifinalists in their conference tournament, finishing at 21 and nine. Cal State Northridge Matadors are in as the number five seed. They'll be taking on the number 12 seed, the Boston University Terriers, with 21 wins. LSU enters the field as the number four seed from the SEC. This marks their 25th appearance to the NCAA tournament in team history. They'll be getting ready to face the number 13 seed, the Wisconsin Milwaukee Panthers. Finished the season with 16 wins. The LSU Tigers have been here before and know how to win in the tournament. They have a very good chance to go a long way. The memory of their last trip to the Final Four is still fresh in their mind, and you can't put a price on that kind of experience, even for the guys who were just watching from the bits last time around. I think that gives them a huge edge. Houston comes in as the number six seed, finishing at 23 and 7. And they take on the 11th seed from the A-10 conference, the Massachusetts Minutemen, with 24 wins. And now the number three seed, the Xavier Musketeers, come into the tournament on the strength of a third-place finish in their conference regular season and were semifinalists in their conference tournament. They are going to play the number 14 seed, the Harvard Crimson, who came in first in their conference tournament, finishing at 22 and 11. Next up is the number 7 seed, the Georgia Bulldogs, have established themselves as one of the best teams from the SEC. They'll be going up against the number 10 seed, the Ball State Cardinals, with 25 wins. This is their ninth appearance to the NCAA tournament in the history of their school. Florida State comes in as the number two seed, finishing at 26 and 7. Idaho comes in to face them at number 15 with 17 wins and the regular season championship of the Ivy League. Looking into the future a little bit, this book and finally, the Boston College Eagles are the top seed, finishing at 25 and 8. They were conference tournament champions in the ACC. They'll take on the Chattanooga. 
Chattanooga Mock, the number 16 ranked team. This marks their 10th appearance all time in the NCAA tournament. Next up is the number 8 seed. The Villanova Wildcats have established themselves as one of the best teams from the Big East. They'll be going up against the number 9 seed, the Texas Longhorns. With 18 wins, they return once more to the very from South Carolina. Comes in as the number 5 seed, finishing at 20 and 9. And they will take on the 12th seed from the Metro Atlantic Conference, the Weaver State Wildcats, with 24 wins. Seton Hall comes in as the number 4 seed. Finishing at 26 and 9. Sam Houston State comes in to face them at number 13 with 22 wins in the tournament and regular season championships of the Southland Conference. Our number 6 seed is from the Big 12. The UNLV Ron Rebels had a tremendous year that included a regular season championship. They are going to play the number 11 seed, the Southern Miss Golden Eagle, who came in first in their conference tournament, finishing at 21 and 11. The Creighton Blue Jays are in as the number three seed. They'll be taking on the number 14 seed, the UC Santa Barbara Gaucho, with 21 wins. And now the number seven seed, the Fairleigh Dickinson Knights, come into the tournament on the strength of a third place finish in their conference regular season and were losers in their first game at their conference tournament. They are going to play the number 10 seed, finishing at 19 and 12. DePaul enters the field as the number two seed from the Big East. It's yet another appearance in the brackets for a school that's no stranger to the NCAA tournament. They'll be getting ready to face the number 15 seed. The Quinnipiac Bobcats will finish the season with 19 wins. The DePaul Blue Demons do the one thing that all great teams absolutely must do, and that's play tremendous team defense. These guys have been shutting down opponents all year with a combination of speed, intelligence, and sheer determination. There have been NCAA championship teams of all shapes and sizes, but all of them play good, strong defense. There are going to be some incredible matchups in the later rounds of this bracket if the top seeds can avoid the early upsets. We can look forward to some real heavyweight battles. What are your thoughts on our top 16 seeds, Clark? Maybe I haven't agreed with the selection committee every year, but I think they did a great job this time. The top 16 looked just about right to me. Florida State, this doesn't strike me as a team that can go very deep in the tournament. Basketball is a game of matchup, and I feel that they don't match up well with the teams in their particular bracket. Now, let's bring the conference picture into focus. The ACC gets nine teams. The Pac-10 with seven. Seven out of the Big East. The SEC gets 16. What a down year for the non-power conference. We're used to seeing at least one of those conferences compete on the level of the power conference. But not this year. Too bad we didn't see more small conference schools in the tournament. None of those conferences got more than one team in the tourney. And I don't expect any David and Goliath stories out of the teams that did get in. I'm surprised there were so few bids for the teams in the Mountain West Conference. It was an especially disappointing year for that conference. Let's come back to the bubble teams that we mentioned earlier in the show and see which of the teams were able to get into the tournament. Oregon State is going to sleep a lot better tonight than they did last night, Greg. I wasn't sure they were going to get that invitation, but they snuck in through the back door. Now we'll see if they make the most of it. While they start prepping for their first round game, the five teams on the other side of the field full-time students again. Utah State can look back at their schedule this year if they're looking for a reason they got snubbed. They played very few difficult teams outside their conference, and the strategy backfired. All right, Clark, 